We understand Havana has been quite busy, Mr. Iglesias, over the past few months. Uh, you've got the uh, president of Iran, prime ministers of uh, Japan, and of course, China, all visited. Uh, what does it say, though, when it comes to Cuba's relations with China, particularly economic ties at this stage? Mr. Iglesias. Yes. Uh, well, you know, the Cuban-Chinese uh, political relations have been very good, I mean excellent, for a long time. You must remember, as uh, Premier Lee said in his article for Grandma Daily, they re are from the 19th century. But in the economic and trade fields, they are not at the same level. So. The main purpose of this visit was, according to the Chinese side and the Cuban side, to take these economic and trade uh, relations to the same level mm. as the political uh, ties. And uh, I think uh, other purposes were to deepen bilateral cooperation and encourage new dynamics in this, uh, pur for this purpose. And I have uh, the impression that all these agreements that were signed in key sectors for mm -hmm. Cuban economy and Cuban update of the economic model will be very useful for Cuba. But all still, right. there are also other uh, agreements that uh, must be considered as cultural, the ex exchange of students, the uh, condone of the debt, and the uh, establishment of a joint venture in Mariel Special Development Zone, which is the pet project for the Cuban economy development. Okay, Professor Liu, you've been listening to your Cuban counterpart talking yes. about what Cuba would like to have on the future list of cooperation with China. We understand China-Cuba has been having very strong economic ties. At least uh, China is uh, Cuba's uh, uh, largest, uh, second largest trade partner next to Venezuela. And uh, Cuba is China's largest trade partner in the Caribbean countries. If we can take a look at some of the numbers, China-Cuba boasts close economic ties. Cuba's, China is uh, Cuba's second largest uh, trading partner after Venezuela, and Cuba is China's largest trading partner in the Caribbean. Bilateral trades due at a 2.2 billion US dollars 2015. 58% increase from the previous year. Machinery, steel, automobiles, and many other industries are all major Chinese exports. And Cuban shipments include agricultural prod produce and commodities to China. We've got some ties go already going on. This premier's trip, how much is it likely to further deepen this economic and trade ties? Uh, aside from political ties, uh, well, uh, Chinese companies already uh, to grasp any opportunities that might pop up in the global marketplace. So right now with the uh, continued, although, although uh, gradually, uh, the deregulation in the uh, Cuba uh, market, so there are uh, a number of opportunities like the infrastructure improvements, uh, particularly telecom, mm. you know, a, a lot of daily utensils from bicycles to refrigerators, so those are the ready market over there, and plus that uh, uh, the Cuba offers the uh, very cheap labor, but with uh, good skill and good education, and so the uh, the price is there is uh, uh, rather stable. So that is a cozy uh, environment for right. the Chinese investment over but, there. But Professor Liu, you said cozy environment for Chinese investment, and yet there are several uncertain factors. First of all. The U.S. relation with Cuba has always been a key factor for Cuba's opening up to the rest of the world and the rest of the world's willingness to work with Cuba. Secondly, you've got several countries already expressing their interest in working with Cuba's uh, future. Uh, for example, uh, as we mentioned, Iran, Japan, and all China, and many of the European capitals are also interested in, besides Washington's earlier approach to Cuba. And thirdly, we do not know necessarily at this moment. Uh, during the, in the Caribbean region, 
what is likely to be the future geopolitical trend with Venezuela, with Cuba, all changing at the same time. So these are uncertain factors. My question tend to be long, but I have mm -hmm. to set the stage for you, Professor Liu. So is it really a very attractive place for Chinese businesses? I still hold that uh, it is going to be a uh, very attractive uh, a place for the Chinese trade and investment. Uh, given all the complex uh, relationship between, you know, Japan, uh, US, United States, and Russia legacy, etc., and uh, number one, Chinese uh, business stand a uh, very strategic advantage hmm. over its peer competitors, and Chinese business are very adaptable to this type of environment, given that we had the same communist legacy. Mm. So uh, when also the state is uh, uh, maintaining more of the say in the business decisions. And uh, uh, number two is that uh, we are able to get engaged in some the uh, decisions in a volatile environment. Mm. And so, uh, the of course, the long-term friendship uh, between these two nations will help to build a, a better cultural uh, environment to uh, support the uh, uh, joint working relationship between China, Chinese people and also the Cuban All people. right. So maybe for the question about the United States, I better go to Professor Hankin in the U.S. Uh, presidential election. Everybody's talking about it. Nobody knows after the new president comes into office what's likely to happen to the legacy of the current president, which is U.S.-Cuba ties. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> it is actually a very good question because up till about a month ago, two weeks ago, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump had virtually the same Cuba policy, but Trump flip-flopped his Cuba policy and has embraced a, a more hardline traditional stance that plays well in certain sectors of Florida. Florida, as you know, is a very key state in mm. the uh, presidential election. It's what we call a swing state. And so it looks like he is pandering to the traditional hardline vote, which actually may backfire, because if you remember, uh, Obama did uh, very well among Hispanics and Cuban Americans in 2012 and in 2008, after he had already started opening up some changes in the U.S.-Cuba policy, allowing more travel and uh, allowing more remittances right. to be sent back to Cuba. So. Right now, um, it's unclear. Uh, Trump originally said that, you know, he wouldn't roll back what Obama has done, but of course he would have got, gotten a better deal. Of course, he sells himself as a deal maker. Right. Hillary Clinton, of course, has said publicly that the embargo should be lifted once and for all. So, on one side, we have a very clear continuation of the Obama policy. On the other side, it's kind of unclear exactly what Trump would do. So mm. this, is, uh, this, is, this is key, especially since, remember, Obama, President Obama traveled to Cuba just six months ago today, and so it's, it's interesting to see the series of foreign leaders, including now the premier of China, Li, uh, uh, visit uh, and sign deals in, in Havana. I also think it's kind of ironic that it looks like that China is much more likely to be the one to bring some capitalism to Cuba instead of the United States. Well. That's how you would describe it in an interesting way. Uh, Mr. Iglesias, uh, the other two guests have been talking about these relations. What do you think, Mr. Iglesias? Does it make any difference to Havana, well, I, whoever is in the office in Washington? Meanwhile, well, what does that mean to Havana's economic ties with other countries, well, such as China? Well, I agree with the... Chinese Deputy Foreign Minister that the Cuban-U.S. relations will not be a, a matter of uh, impeachment in the China-Cuban relations. Mm. Uh, this is very important, very easy to understand because Cuba and China has a long and traditional good, friendly relation, and Cuba and China is giving Cuba much better conditions for credit, China is the main creditor for Cuba at this China. moment. Mm. So it's a, a very important relation for Cuba and Cuba is not going to uh, leave that uh, tie because of the Washington and Havana connection. Mm. I think that China includes, it, it, it can even be a more important partner 
because of the problems we know there are in Venezuela, which is the main partner for Cuba at the moment. Mm. Mr. Iglesias, let's and talk I about... And I can say, I, I think, I think, I think maybe uh, Cuban Americans will remember that uh, Obama was, uh, had a good success with them because of his policy. And Hillary Clinton is perhaps a continuum for Obama's policy about Cuba. <laughs> well, certainly we have seen your political stance from the description you just used. Uh, all right then, because uh, we are not voting for the US presidential election. So we'll let them to figure it out. But Mr. Iglesias, let me continue by asking you more a question about China and Cuba. At this moment, China is the main investor in, for example, the San Diego, the Cuba, the port, second largest of your country. And it's using 100 million US dollars in uh -huh. that regard. Meanwhile, China has also been working on infrastructure projects with Cuba. Uh, but many Chinese are also wondering, is Cuba capable of returning the money after borrowing? Uh, what is likely to be your future economic landscape from today's plan? Well, that's a good question, very good question. At present, Cuba has uh, some financial problems, but if you see the agreements signed now, they are beneficial for some key sectors in Cuba, like biotechnology, which can make the difference for uh, those payments, because uh, those joint ventures and agreements for cooperation, market, uh, production and marketing of biotechnology products could be very profitable. Mm. And that could be a way to pay all this money uh, that China has invested in the island. Mm -hmm. Professor Leo. But still, nothing can be said until it happens. Things happen. Okay. All right, Mr. Lake, Iglesias usually comes uh, with two parts of answers. Uh, uh -huh. Let me go to you, Professor Leo. Here, um, what do you say <laughs> <laughs> about, uh, about this new trend? I mean, really, how much possibility is there? Cuba is saying, well, we're also getting a learning from the economic elements you have been over the years putting into your economy, China, mm -hmm. over the past 30 years reform opening up. So Cuba wants to do the same. But Cuba, China, very different. So is China's knowledge and experience really likely to help Cuba out of the current problems? How does China look at Cuba's future economic prospect, particularly its ability to return the loans? I think the unique model of Chinese uh, uh, overseas investment lies in uh, two uh, sort of paradoxical uh, you know, the, uh, conditions. Number oh, one right. is China is very practical in grasping opportunities in enter into a sort of exotic market. On the other hand, China is very forward looking. So you know, uh, for a number of projects that does not really generate immediate return on investment, we do it but you look at a long-term uh, picture. Mm. And uh, also that uh, many of those decisions uh, can be policy-driven to serve to pave the environment for the future commerce to earn more money out of it. So even if it is a policy loss. So this way, I think the China experience is already uh, benefiting not only Cuba. Now, I think it has, has a huge implication on the reform of Cuba. Mm -hmm. And it's benefiting to many other countries. I, I have really met so many government officials from developing countries. They really feel amazed. Wow. You know, Chinese special economic zones, Chinese uh, uh, model of, uh, you know, the uh, reform really can uh, lend profound uh, inspiration onto uh, those uh, countries that are under developed. All right. Uh, Professor Hankan, if you can, briefly, what do you make the current stage of Cuba's reform, particularly economic reform, really much to learn from China, from your understanding? Absolutely. I think that if you compare Ch Cuba with China in terms of the reforms, Cuba has been significant, but really is insufficient to reach the goals that the Cubans have set for themselves. For example, in the private sector, Cuba is still very, very guarded against allowing for the concentration privately of property or wealth, whereas China has thrown open the doors to that and really counts on a robust 
internationally engaged private sector. It allows foreign uh, Chinese to invest mm. in the Chinese economy. None of that, none of that has happened in Cuba. So Cuba, uh, uh, Raul Castro has often said that he wants to balance between too much haste and too much caution. But it seems like in the last year or two, there has been going, they've been going very slow. I think they're nervous about the opening with the United States, uh, that that might be a Trojan horse to destabilize the revolution. But at the same time, Venezuela is getting less and less of an asset, and they mm. ne really need to deepen and speed up their reforms. Maybe the, uh, maybe the deepening with China, the relationship, will allow them both the political protection and the economic model to go faster and deeper with their reforms, which are really urgent I right see. now in Cuba. Mr. Iglesias, in a hurry, speed up or maintain the current speed? Is China likely to help? I think so. I think China can be a big partner for Cuba, and it is right now a big partner for Cuba because of all these elements we have uh, discussed here, Venezuela, the, Q the U.S.-Cuban relations. But I think that if you look at the agreement signed during the Premier Lee visit, you can see that Cuba has more connections in key sectors with China than any mm. keys, any connection with Washington. So their relation with China for Cuba is more, I think, I think more important. I don't say that the Cuban, China, Cuban American relations are not important, but China is a better partner for the Cuban government at this moment. 